This is a quick presentation of the Satoski indifference curves as presented in Jeshuit and Smith's Chapter 2. Uh, we're going to start with a production possibility set uh, indicated by the production possibility frontier P um, over two consumption goods Q1 and Q2. Consider a particular point on this indifference curve let's say OB, so that o, that means that we're considering places where uh, if um, individual A consumed everything they would get uh, that allocation on the uh, production possibility frontier. Uh, the straight line connecting OB to OA is the contract curve between those two firms and the point A uh, is the is a point on that indifference curve where individual A has utility U1A and U, individual B has utility U1B. Now what we're going to do is we're going to choose an alternative set, um, uh, an alternative point OB star uh, that yields the exact same utility for individual A and B. So you'll see that uh, a prime simply represents a shift along individual A's indifference curve uh, and since the origin for individual B has shifted we have to find uh, another point of indifference curve on the contract curve between OA and OB star uh, that leads to the same level of utility U1B prime. So U1B is equal to U1B prime. Those are indifferent and of course individual A is indifferent as well. So OB and OB star are two points of origin for individual B that lead to the same, that ha make have possible the same indifference or same utilities for both individuals A and B. The Satovsky indifference here is simply a uh, collection of all such origin points that uh, that lead to that same initial level of utility. Uh, so we go uh, all along C. Uh, it is possible to get uh, the same level of utility as we got at OB. Now what is obvious here is that this is not a Pareto efficient allocation because we could move out to a point uh, like this green indifference curve C prime, uh, that's a Satovsky indifference curve C prime, that allows for higher levels of consumption for at least one of the two players. So uh, A could consume more, or B consume consume more, or both A and B could consume more uh, if we moved out to that um, point on the uh, production uh, possibilities frontier uh, relative to the point A prime. So uh, the bottom line is that this Satovsky and Difficulty process demonstrates that unless you are at a point where the marginal rate of transportation is equal to the marginal rates of substitution, uh, the, uh, we're not at a Pareto uh, efficient point uh, in both production and uh, consumption. It's worth pointing out that the a Satovsky indifference curve is not unique and depends upon the point at which we use as a reference point. So for example consider this case where we're going to give the entire allocation to individual A. So we're actually up on the production possibility frontier and the, the indifference curve for you, the individual A uh, is uh, indicated there uh, and individual B doesn't give any utility so their indifference curve is equal to uh, is, is zero at that point, any point along uh, individual A's um, difference curve is equivalent to the Satovsky difference curve at that point. Uh, so we might have something like that. On the other hand, we can switch the axes and now give the entire allocation to individual B. So all I've done is, is taken the exact same point and now move the origin for individual B down to the left um, uh, bottom corner and individual A's uh, now at their um, origin and so all of the uh, goods Q1 and Q2 are given to individual B uh, and his indifference curve might look like this uh, quite different from the one we had before and of course uh, in the same sense that's going to be a new Satoshi indifference curve so so the 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 
So Tonsky and Tiffin curve is a an artifact of the point that we want to consider and is not necessarily unique. Let's derive one more time the Satovsky and Difference Curve in a simpler, cleaner framework. So consider first this edge work box uh, defined over consumers A and B with uh, consumption goods Q1 and Q2. Uh, at the initial utility levels uh, marked by the black dot there, uh, that is associated with the upper right hand corner of the Edgeworth box it tells us the total quantity of, of goods Q1 and Q2 that give rise to those utility levels. So what we're going to do is we're simply going to trace out the, uh, the total uh, quantity um, options that yield exactly those same levels of utility. So we're going to start by just marking that first point and then we're going to slide the indifference curves along each other to give rise to new points uh, that could yield exactly the same levels of utility. So each of those blue dots is associated with the same levels of utility for individuals A and B, although they're uh, different production possibility sets. We then simply combine that full set and that gives rise to this Sadovsky indifference curve.